You're watching News Center. Thank you for staying with us. You're having a conversation in studio and you're saying, you know what, campaigns have officially begun. Kenya will not take a rest from campaign until 2022. And our political affairs reporter, Murimi Mwangi, now takes a look at the Peter Kenneth factor in the 2022 presidential race. Take a look. So lately, there's been so much talk of 2022 politics. The spotlight specifically in the past few days being on the Jubilee lineup come the year 2022. Deputy President William Ruto gearing up for the top seat in 2022 and his preferred choice for a running mate in recent days being the topic of discussion among key political figureheads. Lately, uh, from the Meru section of the Mount Kenya region demanding for one of their own to be the DP's running mate and of course a recent re-emergence of uh, former presidential candidate Peter Kenneth who also unsuccessfully ran for governor in Nairobi also re-emerging as one of the names uh, likely to feature in that political uh, matrix but this of course happening in what appears to be in defiance to the president's directive for uh, uh, politicians or key leaders not to engage in 2022 politics as yet uh, same uh, objective Objection coming from opposition chief Raila Odinga recently. But perhaps before we even discuss the likely uh, 2022 uh, lineup, let me speak to Imenti, Imenti South, no. Imenti, Imenti North member of parliament, uh, uh, Rahim Dawood. Moshimiwa, the president has in the past said that it's too early for some of you to engage in talk of 2022 politics, even before we talk about the likelihood of who is going to be the uh, DP's running mate in 2022. Uh, why the defiance, Moshimiwa? Uh, I think uh, this this year we've gone uh, hyperbolic on uh, 2022 politics. It's not just uh, for the presidency. Already there is talk of replacing governors, replacing MPs, MCAs. So I think uh, it's the fever which we need now to cut down on. But uh, no, that notwithstanding, uh, we're not defying the president. We're just looking at... Uh, what options they are so that we can build on those options. Uh, we do not want to be caught out uh, the way NASA was caught out uh, when uh, they delayed until the last minute to decide who is going to be their flag bearer and who is not. So we just uh, nikujipanga, the way, the way they say, nikujipanga. So we are just uh, kujipangaing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Moshmua, recently we've seen you and a section of leaders from the Meru uh, region fronting one of your own to feature as uh, William Ruto's running mate in 2022. Perhaps why that shift now and uh, what are the names that you have in mind perhaps? Uh, first of all, we have said uh, we as the Mount Kenya East, that is the three counties, that's Embu, the Rakanidi and Meru County, uh, have more than 1.7 million votes amongst ourselves. And uh, all along since independence, we've been uh, uh, joining our cousins from central Kenya uh, in voting in one specific way. So this time we're asking the central Kenya cousins, uh, let the mountain not be up, let it be down where we can see each other and let them support us for the top seat as well. Uh, obviously, we are not going for the presidential, uh, although uh, Governor Munya, uh, ex Governor Munya had said in 2022 he would be standing for, uh, for the presidency. I believe uh, he has, uh, his ambitions are not there now. Uh, so we should be supporting uh, William Ruto for the presidency. And that's why we are asking him to consider highly that uh, we should be able to give him. Uh, the deputy president from our region. And uh, there have been talk, uh, we, although we have not sat down as the Mount Kenya leadership to discuss who we are going to front, but uh, there are two names which come to my mind uh, who would be right for the deputy president's position. Uh, the first one would be our governor Kiraito, him being an old hand in uh, politics. And uh, the second name would be Senator Kidore Kindiki, the Deputy Speaker of the Senate, because uh, they are the most uh, visible uh, amongst all the politicians from the Mount Kenya East. And I think uh, I personally, because I come from Meru, and I would say 
uh, Governor Kiraito would be the best person because he's been in politics for long enough. He knows the workings of uh, how things work and uh, he would be a counterbalancing factor in that uh, our deputy president, who is going to be our president in 2022, is a young man, and Kiraito is a, an older statesman, and I think the combination would be very good. Mm -hmm. Because they say, pale kuna waze, mambo ya On Sunday, we saw the reemergence of Peter Kenneth in a high-profile uh, fundraiser in Uasin Gishu, and the sound bites coming from that particular function of uh, area leaders asking him to get closer to the DP have, uh, you know, created that momentum towards what is perceived to be his preparations to uh, be William Ruto's running mate in 2022. Would Peter Kenneth's entry into Ruto's kitchen cabinet be uh, a problem to some of you as key uh, leaders from the Meru region that have been eyeing that particular slot? Uh, first of all, I want to welcome uh, Peter Kenneth to Jubilee. And uh, I think uh, we're reading too much into what uh, happened over the weekend. Yes, we are welcoming Peter Kenneth. He was from another party and he has come to Jubilee. And uh, I still say Peter Kenneth is welcome, but I welcome him for the post of uh, governor of Nairobi. I think he would do very well uh, if he were the governor for Jubilee, for Nairobi, because he's got a track record. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that was what was his ambition. Uh, I have not heard uh, Peter Kenneth say he would want to be the deputy president of uh, William Ruto. Uh, so even if uh, that would be the case, I would ask him uh, to stand down in favor of Mount Kenya East and stand for the governor for Nairobi. And maybe in future, he could look at uh, the presidency after William Ruto. But uh, currently, as it stands, uh, I would say Peter Kenneth, we welcome him. I have been in his party. I was the candidate initially in 2013, uh, MP seat in KNC. And after that, I moved to APK, Bas party of uh, Governor Kiraito. So it's not that we do not want uh, Peter Kenneth. He is very welcome and uh, I would support him fully for the governor of Nairobi in 2022, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Mweshmiwa. Uh, Rahim Dawood, MP for Imenti North. Back to you in studio. Muremi mm. Mwangi looking at the prospects of uh, now the entry of Peter Kenneth into politics. He was seen on Sunday with very close allies of Deputy President William Ruto, and there's all this speculation. Could he be the next running mate? Um, are political alliances and realignments being seen? So in studio we have Javas Bigambo and uh, Gabriel Muduma. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with me. Muduma, so we're just listening to that story by Murimi Mwangi, and there's all manner of speculation. Could yes. this be the next running mate? Could Deputy President William Ruto be courting uh, Peter Kenneth? And if so, what value does he add to William Ruto? Uh, Linda, first of all, I don't think we've seen the end of realignments. They are going to happen, they are going to continue. I mean, as, as we move towards 2022, there's going to be all manner of, you know, all, all sorts of things, pushing, pulling, this one stepping up, this one stepping down, moving from one region to the other, who do we need to bring on board, who has political capital, who do we need to entice, who do we need to let go. There's going to be a lot of, you know, hula baloos, political hula baloos. But one thing you cannot play down is what I told you earlier on, what? how a community can actually take you out of relevance and bring you into relevance. Is this the time that uh, the Gamer community want to bring uh, somebody like Peter Kenneth into relevance? And no, there have been calls for a deputy president uh, to come from the Gamer community. There has been calls. There will be calls because everybody wants to sit down and say, what is our stake in this new political uh, shape up? Where are we in the grand scheme of things? And it's not only the Gamer people. Probably the Luya will come with their own barrage of you know, people in Nyanza, people in coast. Welcome to year two. It, it, by the way, it's going to be, it's going to be, and now this is where you'll start hearing the discussion that everybody has been running away from. Are we going to be treated to the referendum debate again? We never know. Like I told you, there's going to be a lot happening. There's going to be a lot happening. And if it comes down to uh, a choice, for the uh, top contenders, mm. whoever will be running for uh, presidency. Case in point, uh, uh, Deputy William Ruto, which I told you earlier on, uh, it seems he's the only one who has said or who has a clear uh, uh, lined up uh, succession plan. 
if things remain as they mm. are. Mm. But as you know, you think Linda, they'll change at politics, some point? Well, in politics, anything can change. Just the other day, you never, you never thought somebody like Aisha Jumo would ever work or would ever say uh, yeah, that, 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 yeah, exactly that, that's what that. I'm saying politics politics will always be you never know it can actually change so seriously that you wonder wow mm. were we here three years ago so I mean we we have to keep we have to keep looking out and we have to keep seeing where leaders are going in their line of thought who they, are they bringing in PK coming into the bandwagon even though he he has not said you know he's he has not said really uh, what yeah. kind of demarcation he has. You'll see there's a push by a certain community. This could be our man. Is he the one? We have to wait and see. But there is also the other issue of other communities. I mean, uh, how will they come to play? People like uh, 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 the Luya community. Uh, where do you put them? Or, you know, the coast people, where do you put them? It is not an easy thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Linda. Mm. It is not, it's not an easy thing at this point. And that's why I was saying, if you really want to run away from this, concentrate on the agenda that you gave to the people. Concentrate then once on the you big achieve four. that, you don't even have to convince people. Once you've achieved that, it will be a through to through. Failure to which, ah, you'll be in problems. Javas, mm -hmm. let's look at Peter Kenneth, the man. What value does he add to the deputy president? And if he was to r come in as the deputy, um, the running mate for uh, William Ruto, what's, what are some of the values that you think he needs to now inculcate for people to trust? Looking at him as a, start looking at him as a leader, as you did mention in that faction in Eldoret, he mentioned nothing about development, nothing about corruption, nothing about where the country is. What now does he need to work on? So that there, there are different images of Peter Kenneth that I can speak to. Mm. And I would ask, are we talking about Peter Kenneth, the man that is known to have been a member of parliament for Galtanga and known in his hometown? Are we talking about the man that is perceived to be a politician that a country would desire to lead it? Are we talking about Peter Kenneth, a political apparition? You know, are we talking about the mirage in his politics? Those are the perspectives that we would want to look at. Mm. Because it has been very <coughs> difficult to reconcile Peter Kenneth, the former Gatanga MP, the ambitious politician, and a politician who can deliver at the ballot. A rejuvenated politician. Yes. And that has been seen when he ran for president, for governor, that mm. even a nomination he could not secure. Today, if William Ruto would go to Rift Valley, there will be a mass of humanity. Mm, yeah, Uhuru Kenyatta it. going to central and to coast, there would be a mass of humanity. If Peter Kenneth were to stand in central or even in Mombasa or in western, will the world and his wife show up? The answer is no. Even his wife, Javas. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the world and his wife. Uh -huh. So, the thing is this. Before Peter Kenneth starts speaking in proverbs and parables because uh, he's trying to be messianic, politically that will not work right now. He needs, first of all, to go back to the drawing board okay. and rebuild himself. Start from the uh, ground, rebuild himself, cultivate an image and a new Peter Kenneth that is very different from the one that we saw who ran for governor, the one that we saw making an attempt at the presidency. We need to see a different Peter Kenneth. Today, How different, Javas? Today, How different? Yeah. today, just give a platform to Raila Odinga. Give a platform to William Ruto or give a platform to Uhuru Kenyatta. Those are orators, those you will see astute, accomplished leaders, mm. gifts of the gap, accomplished in thought, and you'll see that in five minutes of delivering remarks, there are a number of thematic issues that you can pick from their statements. Yeah. When Peter Kenneth spoke in the Rift Valley, that entire period, there is nothing thematic you can pick from what he said. There, in fact, there's no even sound bite that you can pick from his remarks in the Rift Valley. Okay. So he needs actually to uh, remodel himself. Before that, I think he is just a red herring. And... <laughs> okay, yes. and... Like James is going with this one. Finish that, finish that. And, and as a matter of fact, we know very well that uh, he is known to be running or to be doing anything he can to be on the ballot every successive election. Okay. So it is possible that some schemers know very well that Peter Kenneth will want to be on the ballot in 2022, 2022 for whatever position, whether it is MCA, senator, governor, <laughs> or even president. He wants to run for something. Somehow he wants so to be So the thing is this. If it's a question of 
some candidate start, you know, ri rising from central and saying that he wants to run or contest the presidency. To what extent will that try to forestall or impede the speed with which the deputy president is running already? So one thing, he needs to be curtailed. And that is okay. why the hunters and gatherers in Ruto's camp are doing a very good job. He has been hunted, gathered already. And any other person who may appear to be a threat will be gathered so that the path remains a bit clear for Ruto. Because okay. right now, as it seems, it's possibly only God that may stand on Ruto's path. Because right now, the way he has lined his political ammunition, he's not leaving anything to chance. And that exactly. is why. He's chatting apart. By, by that part. reality, yeah. one thing, Peter Kenneth will only be an arrow in Ruto's quiver. But he cannot be said right now, these four years in advance, that he has got the political weight on his own <clears throat> before the sympathy of the community that may be bestowed upon him. Okay. He cannot right now say that he can deliver refuelly. So he has a lot of work to still Linda, 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 what, what I can add up in there, if and if, you get if, the final if, word was, in yeah, this. If, uh -huh. if I was to advise Peter Kenneth at this juncture, I would tell him, you know, when Barack Obama comes to Kenya, try as much as possible, get a sitting with him. Yes. Learn this guy. Uh, Obama was created by just one speech at the Democratic Convention mm. of 2004. Other than that, nobody knew Obama. You need they used to call him the black man yes, with a weird need, accent. You need yes. that moment, the Eureka moment, where everybody will curse and say, damn, where has this guy been? You need that. And you may recall as Obama started uh, saying that in 2008, he say, started saying that I may go out and get uh, or run for the bigger office. Mm. Many people within the Republican uh, Party were saying this gentleman does not have what you call executive experience. But as he moved along, yeah. Bill Clinton pointed America to one thing. He said, the man may not have executive experience, but look at the campaign machinery that this gentleman has set up. Even today in the US, nobody has ever set up a campaign machinery than what Obama did. Yeah. That is what I would encourage Peter Kenneth. Just sit, watch, him, sit get, down with Obama look and talk for, to him. Look for a window and set up a Peter Kenneth moment <laughs> where everybody will say, wow. Okay. And that's what we We saw Ruto do it and Uhuru in Nakuru, where everybody was like, and these guys were, they, they were in ICC. They were, you know, they were mm. uh, candidates. Indeed. I usually call them yeah. ID, ICC and candidates. Like, okay. And everybody was like, wow. wow. These are forced to be reckoned with. Okay. That is what Peter can That's a good place to leave it. Javas Bigambo, Gabriel Mudomo. Always such a pleasure speaking to you, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm hoping we'll you can have... We'll be back on Friday. <laughs> 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 you even have a plan for Friday. Oh, yes. Do you, have, do you have something you want to talk about on Friday? <laughs> yeah, probably sugar. Oh, man, this thing is crazy. This is, but, you know, Javas comes from that area. But this is the oh, yeah, but they can tell us what's happening. What's, what's, happening? what's happening with the sugar? Guys, I need, to, I, need, I need to wrap this up. No, no, no. sugar, man. It's a serious debate, Linda. Javas Bigambo, Gabriel Buzuma, thank you so much for your time. People, thank you for watching News Center. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Linda Ogutu. Leo Mashinani begins in a couple of minutes with Nick Wambua.